Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, we're checking out AMD's newly released Ryzen 7 5700X 3D. That's right, a newish AM4 processor. Well, it's technically new, but also it's not really new. What we have here is binned silicon, I guess silicon that wasn't probably good enough to be a 5800X 3D, didn't quite meet the clock specifications. But rather than throw it away, AMD has reduced the core clocks by 9%, dropping the maximum boost frequency from 4.5 GHz to 4.1 GHz. And we're also looking at a 12% reduction to the base clocks. Other than that though, everything else is the same. Well, of course the price, which has been reduced to just $250 US. That's technically a 44% reduction in MSRP when compared to the 5800X 3D, but of course that part hasn't sold at the MSRP for a very long time and can be had today for as little as $320 US. But even so, that means that the 5700X 3D is still coming in at a 22% discount for what will certainly be less than a 10% reduction in performance. So for those of you who have invested in the AM4 platform and are after a cheap upgrade but couldn't justify $320 on the 5800X 3D, will the new $250 5700X 3D get you over the line? Well, let's jump into the benchmarks to find out how likely that is going to be. Now, I'm not going to bother with application benchmarks, or at least a whole lot of them, for this sort of testing. I'm sure the vast majority of you are interested in gaming, as this is typically where AMD's 3D V cache provides the biggest performance improvements over the standard models. For example, when running the Cinebench multi-core test, we find that the 5700X 3D is actually 9% slower than the 5700X, and that's because it's clocked 11% lower. And as I said, the massive 96 megabyte L3 cache doesn't help in this test. When compared to the 5800X 3D, we're looking at a 7% reduction in performance, and by today's standards, the 5700X 3D doesn't look particularly impressive in this all-core workload, coming in around 20% slower than the 6-core 12-thread 7600X. Then if we look at single-core performance, you get a very clear picture of how things have progressed here since the release of Zen 3. Not only that, but taking some frequency out of the 5700X 3D has dropped it to the bottom of our graph, coming in 9% slower than the 5800X 3D. But as I said, that massive 3D V cache is of no benefit here, so let's move on to take a look at some tests that do benefit from a fat L3 cache. Okay, so let's get into it. The gaming benchmarks, and first up we have Baldur's Gate 3. Here the 5700X 3D is a mere 3% slower than the 5800X 3D, delivering performance that's comparable to the Ryzen 9 Zen 4 parts, such as the flagship 7950X. So that's certainly impressive. That said, the non-3D V-Cache Zen 4 processors don't perform that well in this title. Then when compared to Intel's Core i5-13600K and the 14600K, the 5700X 3D is just 11% slower, while it's also 28% slower than AMD's current flagship gaming CPU, the 7800X 3D. So overall, solid performance, and really, I think given the price, you really could say great performance. Next up, we have Cyberpunk 2077, and here the 5700X 3D is just 4% slower than the 5800X 3D, placing it alongside the Ryzen 5 7600X, while it was 7% faster than the new 8700G. You're also looking at a fairly significant 22% increase from the standard 5700X. For those of you already on the AM4 platform, the 5700X 3D looks to be a very attractive upgrade, but if you were interested in spending more on a full system upgrade, as I just noted, you'll see similar performance out of the Ryzen 5 7600X, or up to 36% greater performance when opting for something like the 7800X 3D, which admittedly is much faster, but also much more expensive. Hogwarts Legacy has been tested with ray tracing enabled, and in this example, the 5700X 3D is 5% slower than the 5800X 3D, which saw it match the new 8600G APU. When compared to the non-3D V-Cache model, so the standard 5700X, the 5700X 3D is just 8% faster in this example. It's also 11% slower than the 7600X, and a massive 29% slower than the 7800X 3D, though of course, as I've noted before, that CPU does cost a lot more, and so does the supporting platform. So realistically, in terms of value, the 5700X 3D looks as though it's going to be quite difficult to beat, or really even match. 
Next up, we have Star Wars Jedi Survivor. And again, the 5700X 3D is only marginally slower than the 5800X 3D. In fact, just 4% slower in this example. And here we have another example where it's comparable to the 7600X and really even the 7700X. Moreover, when compared to the standard 5700X, you're looking at an almost 20% performance uplift. And that's despite still being 35% slower than the 7800X 3D. Moving on to ACC, here the 5700X 3D was 4% slower than the 5800X 3D, delivering comparable performance to a range of CPUs based on much newer architectures that also happen to cost a lot more, such as the Core i5-14600K and Ryzen 9 7900X for example. It was also 12% faster than the 7600X, and this is made possible due to the fact that this game benefits massively from cache performance. Spider-Man Remastered has been tested with ray tracing enabled, and this can hurt the performance of CPUs using DDR4 memory, as the game is very memory bandwidth heavy. Overall, the 5700X 3D does very well here, though the 1% lows are noticeably lower than that of comparable DDR5 enabled CPUs, such as the 13600K for example. Again, the 5700X 3D is just 4% slower than the 5800X 3D, making it 8% faster than the new 8700G APU, and almost 20% faster than the standard 5800X, at least when comparing the average frame rate. The results recorded in A Plague Tale Requiem are quite interesting. Here the 5700X 3D is 8% slower than the 5800X 3D, which is considerably more than the typical 4% margins that we've seen so far. Of course, it can be clocked up to 9% slower, depending on the workload, so this sort of margin makes sense, and I guess rather, I'm quite surprised that we haven't seen more of it. Still, despite the drop-off, the 5700X 3D is very respectable here for a $250 processor, just edging out the 5800X and 5700X models. We're looking at a 7% margin in Assassin's Creed Mirage. Here, the 5800X 3D rendered 184 FPS, to 172 FPS for the 5700X 3D, though the 1% lows were similar. When compared to the standard 5700X, the new 3D V-Cache model was a massive 26% faster in this example, which actually made it faster than the new 8700G and even Intel's Core i5-14600K, so that's a great result overall. Here the 5700X 3D and 5800X 3 delivered basically identical performance in Watch Dogs Legion, as here the new $250 model was a mere 1% slower with 153 FPS. This was comparable performance to that of the 7600X and 7900X, and a good bit faster than the 8700G and Core i5-14600K. It's also a massive 32% increase from the standard 5700X, though it was also 22% slower than the much more expensive 7800X 3D, but just 9% slower than the Core i9-14900K. Hitman 3 seems to benefit from the extra bandwidth DDR5 memory offers, much like what we saw in Spider-Man Remastered. Core clock speeds also play a key role, and here the 5700X 3D was 8% slower than the 5800X 3D, though it still allowed for 195 FPS on average, which meant it was 10% faster than the standard 5700X. So not the most impressive 3D V-cache uplift we've seen, but performance overall is impressive from a $250 processor. Now just quickly, here's a look at total system power consumption, and as you can see, these older Zen 3 CPUs are still very efficient. The 5700X 3D lowered total system usage by 7% in Baldur's Gate 3, which is great given it was just 3% slower than the 5800X 3D. With a total consumption of roughly 350 watts, it increased usage by 20 watts over the standard 5700X, so that's a mere 5% increase for what amounted to a 25% performance improvement. Then in Cyberpunk, the 5700X 3D and 5800X 3D consumption was about the same, and we saw that performance was also very similar. Interestingly, despite being 22% slower than the 5700X in this title, the 5700X 3D configuration actually used less power, and this is because the CPU isn't clocking as high and therefore doesn't require as much voltage, so although the GPU is working harder, total power consumption balanced out overall. Finally, here's our 10 game average, and as you can see, the 5700X 3D isn't a great deal slower than the 5800X 3D, just 4% on average across the games that we tested. And that made it slightly slower than the 7600X, but faster than the new 8700G 
and nearly 20% faster than the standard 5700X. That said, it was 8% slower than the 13600K, though the Intel CPU was running expensive DDR5 7200 memory, so in terms of value, the 5700X 3D should come out on top. Now, taking our 10 game average, let's make some cost per frame calculations. And I'm going to skip just comparing the CPU prices. And this is because most people interested in a 5700X 3D will already be on the AM4 platform using a previous generation 3000, 2000, or maybe even a 1000 series processor. And they're looking for a cost effective, quick and easy way to breathe new life into their existing PC. In that example, you don't care about the value of a 14th gen Intel Core processor or a newer AM5 processor, making that comparison is pointless. But if you're building a new PC or you want to get the most bang for your buck and don't necessarily care about upgrade paths, not that you're really getting that with a 14th gen processor anyway, but if you are looking at building a new PC, then you want to know how these platforms compare in terms of cost per frame. So this data is based on the cost of the CPU combined with the cost of a half decent motherboard and 32 gigabytes of memory, specifically the memory that we use for testing. This means for the AM4 options, I've gone with a $110 budget for the motherboard, allowing for either the ASRock B550M Pro 4 or PG Riptide. Both of them work well. Then for the memory, we have a DDR4 3600CL16 32GB kit, which can be had for $80. The 14600K has been placed on a Z690 motherboard for $130, as they're much cheaper than the newer Z790 models. And then we have the DDR5 7232GB kit, which was used for testing, and that costs $130 US. Then for the AM5 platform, we have to spend $140 US on a B650 motherboard, as they're much more expensive right now. And that buys us the ASRock B650M HDV slash M.2. And then we have the DDR5 6000 CL3032 gigabyte memory kit, which again was used for testing, and that costs $120 US. So with all of that information punched into our graph, we see that for new system builders, the 5700X 3D technically offers the best value, though realistically for anyone building a new system, the Ryzen 5 7600X on the AM4 platform is without question the way to go. You're generally getting better performance, better features, and a healthy upgrade path. The Core i5 14600K is comparatively pretty poor value, costing 15% more per frame. Also, for those of you eventually going with a discrete GPU, the 8600G has proven to be rather poor value as well. And this part really needs that premium DDR5 memory to avoid a serious performance hit. The main takeaway here being that for AM4 owners, the 5700X 3D is a considerably better value deal than the 5800X 3D, even when factoring in the cost of a motherboard and memory kit, because in this example, it is 10% better value. That said, if we ignore the cost of the motherboard and memory, as you don't need those if you're already on the AM4 platform, then the 5700X 3D is almost 20% better value. So there you have it. For those of you already on AMD's AM4 platform and are in need of more CPU power for gaming, the 5700X 3D is an exceptionally good deal. Price is just $250 US. It offers an affordable, quick and easy upgrade. And as good as the 5800X 3D is, the 5700X 3D is just better value. Essentially, for what is the price of DDR5 memory and an AM5 motherboard, you can buy the 5700X 3D. So it's hard to argue that those already on AM4 shouldn't just buy the 5700X 3D. It's certainly going to look after them for years to come. All of that said, if you're in need of a new PC or a platform upgrade, you should ignore the 5700X 3D and instead buy a Ryzen 5 7600X as it offers similar value with better features and the ability to upgrade to yet to be released AM5 CPUs in the future. Also, keep in mind the Ryzen 5 7600 costs $200 US and delivers similar performance to that of the 7600X, so that's probably worth a look at for a $30 saving. Anyway, it's great to see AMD still offering more value on the AM4 platform, and it's particularly great news for those of you who invested in it and are looking for a cheap upgrade option. If you are on the AM4 platform, let me know what you think of the 5700X 3D. Has it enticed you to upgrade? I'm of course keen to read your feedback, but for now we are done with this one.
Uh, thank you to all our Patreon Floatplane members because we did have to purchase this CPU. There is no review program uh, for the 5700X3, at least at this point in time. AMD has not sampled these, which is why we're only getting our review out now. Gamers Nexus did beat us by multiple days, probably close to a week at this point. Well, probably not that much, but they beat us by days. So, you know, that sucks. Bloody GN Steve beating us the punch, but they didn't get the box, did they? They didn't get the box. See, this is a genuine 5700X3D box. And I, for, for reasons that I'm... I can't give you, that's important. So we have the actual box, so therefore our review is better than that of Gamers Nexus. So make sure you go over to the Gamers Nexus review and say the Harbour and Box review was better because they had the real genuine box. Steve will appreciate that, so go let them know. Um, where was I going with this? I don't know. I probably should end it there before I get myself into any more trouble. Um, but yeah, float plane Patreon, because it does help us buy things like this. Uh, I actually spent over a thousand Australian dollars on AM4 processors last week. I got four in total. So there is more AM4 goodness coming up on the channel. So make sure you subscribe for that. Anyway, I'm just going to leave it there. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.